Dakota is a 25-year-old veterinary technician from Canada by day, an obvious crab enthusiast by night. She even runs a crab-related Instagram at Oz for Claws. Besides her three hermit crab babies, Peeves, Paparazzi, and Potato, she is also mama to one cat, Lyric, and a border collie, Kilo. This is Dakota's first time speaking as a presenter and advocate for hermit crab care, having a keen interest in not only seeing her crabs survive, but also thrive, led her down a rabbit hole of research into ways she could enrich her crabitat. Over the CrabCon weekend, her goal is to provide information and inspiration to young and wise crab keepers alike with her passion as her guide. Please welcome Dakota. Hello, and thank you for joining me for this presentation today. I am Dakota, a veterinary technician by trade and avid animal lover. I got into crab keeping in September of 2020, nearly two years ago, and I love the continual learning that has come with this venture. Today, I will be talking all about hermit crab enrichment, what it is, and its importance. I've even included some budget-friendly and beginner tips to get you started. Get ready. Here we go. So what is hermit crab enrichment and why should you care? Enrichment by dictionary definition is the action of improving or enhancing the quality or value of something. Thus, enrichment makes something, in this case our crabs lives, more meaningful, substantial, or rewarding. You might still be asking why this is important. I'm getting there. Did you know that the use of enrichment in dogs and cats has been linked to a decrease in stress? This is because it allows the animal to feel a sense of control over their environment and provides mental, physical, and sensual, think, sight, taste, smell, etc., stimulation into their lives. Plus, enrichment is pretty fun for us to provide them and for them too. So, what does enrichment look like in our crab tanks? In our tanks, our main goal is to encourage natural behaviors, like walking long distances, foraging for food, and climbing. These can be simulated through using hamster wheels and saucers, fun food dishes and toys, and ample climbing with ropes and ladders, and the likes. Remember, for enrichment to be most effective, it should be done in a way that doesn't cause stress or anxiety. Now, before we get started, there are a few things I'd like you all to take note of. Got your pens and paper ready? All right. As with anything, we want to make sure our crabs are kept happy, healthy, and more importantly, safe. I have compiled a list of basic tips to help you achieve just that. One, be aware of materials you use in any DIY projects. Silk plants may be ripped at and ingested. Be mindful of dyes and paints used on surfaces. Be cautious and try to avoid metal in the tank. Metal plus moisture equals rust, which can be highly toxic. Two, file down sharp edges. You don't want to get cut and neither do your crabs. Three, monitor all tank items for wear and replace when needed. Just as you'd replace your dog's favorite ball if it got a hole or tear in it, I want you to think about doing the same thing for your crabs. Four, Ensure all glues and silicones used are of an approved or safe variety and are allowed to fully cure, which is the drying time, before you add it to the tank. This is usually at least 72 hours, but it really just depends on the silicone. And other than that, it's always best to use your own best judgment and ask if you need help. Now, on to the main event. Drum roll, please. Today we will be covering the following enrichment types, nutritional, climbing, physical, mental, and other, which is anything that doesn't fit into the other categories. 
Don't worry if you have questions now. I can almost guarantee that they will be answered as we go. Also, I just wanted to take a minute to show you some pictures of my tank. Things have been added and removed since this photo was taken. But as you can see, there's lots for the crabs to do and explore. I've included pictures of my three crab crew as well. We will cover nutritional enrichment first. Nutritional enrichment helps our crabs use their brains to forage for food the way they would in the wild. This can be accomplished with bird foraging toys, as pictured on the left hand side. I purchased both the ball and all plastic millet holder off of Amazon, and both have held up very well in the tank. Another option would be fun or funky shaped dishes like the barnacle bowls that Ginny of Hobo Hermie offers in her shop. These are a bit more expensive of an option for some, but the clay dishes, regardless of seller, tend to hold up very well and for a very long time and are worth the initial investment. A cheaper alternative may be paint palettes from the dollar store. These allow for us to offer the variety we need and also, in my case, help with portion control. I believe I purchased a package of four or six for under $2. Finally, we have the Curiosity Cubes, which were made popular by Cenobita Curiosities. These are like Krabby Kongs, if you're familiar with Dog Kongs, and are so fun to watch our crabs kick around and interact with. Now, you may be wondering, what should I put into my puzzles and dishes? Quick answer, anything big enough that it won't easily fit through the holes on a curiosity cube or other puzzle, and whatever your crabs go crazy for. In my experience, things like nuts and seeds, popcorn, dates or dried fruit, dried flowers, etc. Half the fun is figuring out what excites your crabs. Some other ideas for nutritional enrichment include leaf litter, which can be sprinkled onto the sub to allow foraging. Just make sure to check the safe foraging guides. Foraging amongst fake plants. This can be accomplished by attaching boxwood or plant tiles to egg crate and laying the egg crate along the sub. Chia gardens. Chia grows very well and easily in the tank conditions. In fact, soap dishes from the dollar store and air plant globes, pictured, make excellent and cheap chia gardens. Cuddle bone is another option, as well as worm castings and green sand, and don't forget about our moss pits. Pictured, I have two of Piper's chia gardens along with some of her crabby crew. Next up, climbing enrichment, arguably one of the most important. Since we can't grow entire trees in our tanks, we must get inventive. A sheet of egg crate or light diffuser can be made into backgrounds with boxwood, plant or plant tiles affixed, or even plastic canvas. This allows for lots of creativity. As you can see, based on the picture from Andrea Skinner in the bottom left corner, with colored plastic canvas, just about any design and theme is made possible. Climbable gauge covers are also available through Cenobita Curiosities. These protect the gauges, but also make them fun and climbable for the crabs. Another cheap climbing idea would be zip tie chains, again popularized by Andrea Skinner. Quick tip for cutting egg crate. Diagonal cutters or wire snips work very well for initial cuts, but to get the edges flush, a toenail trimmer may be used. Be aware, plastic pieces may become projectile. Also, another reminder to file down those sharp edges. More ideas for climbing enrichment include ropes and ladders. Pictured I have some of each from Hobo Hermes shop reptile vines. Be aware, as these often have metal wires along the inside to allow them to bend and hold shape. To prolong their life in the tank, silicone may be applied to fill the open ends. Hammocks are another option. I use the ones pictured as they are entirely plastic based and hold up well in the high humidity. I have found that any key rings can often be replaced by thin zip ties. Finally, fake plants can be used as well. Just be aware, many dollar store plants have plastic coated wire stems. Aquarium plants can make colorful and fun substitutes. On to physical enrichment. 
Did you know that crabs will walk for miles along beaches each day in their natural habitat? Thus, hamster wheels or saucers, I have both as you can see, uh, can be used to allow the crabs to walk those long distances as they would in the wild. Now, for a quick break from the info dump, I have attached two short videos of my crabs on the respective wheel and saucer. Let's watch one now. Be patient when introducing new wheels or saucers to the tank. It may take some time before your crabs discover it. You can try attaching plastic mesh to your wheel, as I have done, and placing high value treats inside. I use popcorn. This may help to entice them. My wheel has become like the tank water cooler, or meeting place, if you will, and it's not uncommon for me to see at least one of the crabs on it at any given time, as we can see in the second video. Mental enrichment is pretty well encompassed in the other slides, but is anything that makes our crabs think and problem solve. Some examples are food puzzles, tank decor swaps, lots of climbing, as more climbing equals more thinking, etc. So what about the other categories I mentioned earlier? The items here are often things we have in our tanks already that don't come to mind when we think about enrichment. Some examples include shells. Some crabs, including one of mine, get a lot of enjoyment out of frequently swapping shells. A little diva, if you will. Which is yet another reason to ensure we are supplying them in adequate amounts and in proper sizes. Cover and hides. I would argue that this is one item many of us forget to mention, but it is very important as it provides for a safe place to sleep and for them to explore. Secondary levels and toppers allow for extra climbing room and are a great way to make the most of tanks with a small floor plan. And climbable or deep pools. This allows for our crabs that like to swim to swim and explore. Often referred to as pants in the crab community, shells are vital to reducing stress and aggression in our tanks. We are all very aware of the minimum shell requirement of three to five shells per crab. And over the weekend, we have learned all about how to shop and size for shells. Thus, I'm not going to dive too deeply into the topic here. Still, as I had previously mentioned, some crabs get great enjoyment out of frequently swapping shells. I have attached to the slide a picture of my crab, Peeves, enjoying the shell shop, and a video of him swapping shells. This is just a snippet of the action, but a cool video to watch. On to cover and hides. Clutter your tanks. Yes, you heard that right, and I'll repeat it now. Clutter your tanks. Often in the various crab groups and pages, I see members asking how they can help their crabs be more active. This is definitely one way of accomplishing that. Often, in trying to allow ourselves better viewing into the tank, we fail to remember that our crabs are, by nature, prey species who thrive in being allowed to feel safe and secure in their environment. Remember, the main goal of enrichment is to reduce stress and allow for ways to explore natural behaviors. Hiding is one of those behaviors. Quick tip, hamster and guinea pig huts can make great hides at a very low cost. Just make sure that the entrance is wide and tall enough for your biggest crab. Also, try to avoid unsafe woods and metals in the tank. And if you're 3D printing anything for your tank, like my purple hide that is pictured, Ensure that you are using a food grade plastic. This has got to be one of my favorites, toppers. 
Remember earlier when I said how important climbing is to our crabs? Yes? Good. I knew you were paying attention. Hermit crabs have been known to climb trees in their natural habitats. Using toppers allows for much needed climbing enrichment and allows for maintaining a smaller base profile. After all, the sky is the limit. Pictured eye of Christine's tank. I love how her topper and tank combination allows for climbing over every inch of her base tank. Plus, the natural look is amazing. A++++. After saying that this is one of my favorite forms of enrichment, did you really think I could pick only one example to showcase? A few more examples include Ginny's tank. All of her tanks are gorgeous and have so much thought put into them to uphold the natural aesthetic she goes for. And they are so beautifully cluttered with so much for the crabs to do and explore. Right? I have Piper's topper prior to her plant additions. I love her use of egg crate and plastic canvas to allow the crabs to climb all over it. This was partially my inspiration for my two toppers. And finally, middle is one of my toppers. I wanted to give examples that were different and all stunning, so that regardless of your style, natural like Ginny or Christine, whimsical and colorful like my tank, or a mix of the two like Piper, with enough creativity, it is doable and enjoyable for the crabs. Moving on. We have climbable and deep pools. All pools should be deep enough that our largest crabs can fully submerge. This, however, does not mean that they have to be boring. Let's take a look at Abby's pools, for example. Here we can see how she has used egg crate, plastic canvas, and zip ties to create a series of ramps and platforms. This not only allows her crabs to enter and exit the pools safely, but is quite pleasing to look at. The only downside is that many of us cannot afford the space for such large pools. To the right is an example of the pool design that I use in my tank. I use double stack Tupperware containers with plastic mesh zip tied to both inner and outer rim of the top container for easy access into and out of the pools. A few tips to make this design work. You can use rocks or something else with weight to weigh down the plastic mesh along the bottom of your pools. I have used what's known as sea glass, so it can often be picked up in small chunks uh, if you walk along beaches, and the water repeatedly hitting this glass, as well as the grit of the sand, helps to smooth out the edges, so there's no risk that my crabs are going to be cut. Two, placing rocks between the stacked dishes makes removal of only the top dish much easier. Again, I use little pebbles between them, and if you're one that likes to bury your dishes, I use a shelf buried under the sub, but if you bury your dishes, this allows you to lift the top dish only without disturbing the sub so much. And finally, bubblers or filters can help prolong the time between water changes, and crabs have even been known to play in the bubbles. And now for a quick bonus round. I wasn't exactly sure where to include this, so I've attached it towards the end of my presentation. This is my suspended platform brainchild and came about as I was looking through my extra odds and ends of tank decor. I started with egg crate that I cut to size to fit inside my tank before attaching plastic canvas to the top for added traction. I had discovered a package of plastic baby teething rings at a thrift store months prior and I immediately thought, my crabs could use this. I attached these rings to the platform and then threw the egg crate background in my topper. Later, I found fake succulents at the dollar store and after removing the stems, attached them with zip ties onto the platform and created a hanging foraging dish and climber. I also added some plastic cat springs or spirals to the edges to add to the colorful or whimsical theme of my tank. In the final picture, we can see it in place in the topper. Finally, time for a quick recap. Enrichment is the action of improving or enhancing the quality or value of something. There are many forms of enrichment with the goal of supporting and encouraging natural behaviors and limiting boredom and stress. These include nutritional, climbing, physical, mental, and other. I hope that you have all learned something today and maybe gained some insight into the many ways you can enrich the lives of your own Claude children.
Thank you for joining me today. I'll be happy to answer any final questions in the chat.